bit of a special episode. I'm out here in the Utah wilderness and I lost my drone on top of a giant cliff. String around the drone on the FPV cassette. And I'm hoping when I land the FPV safely and successfully, all I have to do is tug on that string. I'm gonna try to catch it in this blanket and uh, hopefully it won't break on the way down. It probably will, realistically. I've had that drone for a very long time, and honestly, it's a tool. I'm impressed that it took me this long before I actually lost it. It's made me a fair amount, much more than the manufacturer's retail value on it. Just a tool. You know, I, I actually have another drone as well, too, so it's okay. But I kind of want to get the footage kind of want to get that SD card. It was a brand new battery. So let's go try to get it back. Just a couple uh, tools that I have as a Leatherman. I have this 16 gauge bailing wire, which, which maybe I can form some kind of a grappling hook or something if, if I get really desperate. I have my 600 feet of twine. I have my camera. I'm going to try to zoom in and record the rescue mission. I have some hand warmers. It's pretty cold out here. This is an empty drone bag. I'm hoping I can use it when I put the broken slash recovered slash lost whatever drone in here on the hike back. It's my FPV bag with all my FPV goodies and a blanket for catching and a tripod and my other camera bag. I'll have a couple lenses with me. This location, it doesn't look like much right now, but once you're on the inside of that basin way in the distance, you're at a destination called Long Dong Silver. And it's a giant rock spire in the middle of these basins and these cliffs that look like this. It's pretty unreal. So I've been walking for about, uh, it's really not that long of a walk from where my car was, maybe 20, 30 minutes. I'm wearing like, three layers of jackets and the sun is directly above me. It's still cold, but now I'm starting to feel the heat a little bit. I think there's a high of, let's say, 40 degrees today, something like that. Last night it dropped to a low of about eight degrees, which was manageable, but not ideal. You can see I'm kind of pack muling it. Got a backpack in the front, little carabiner clip, backpack in the back for FPV. Oh, my car is way over there in the distance. And as soon as we clear over this cliff, we enter the basin of where Long Dong Silver is. And I just saw the spire. It's gonna be hard to see it on this wide angle GoPro, but it's sticking out right there. So I'll give you an update when I reach the base. So there it is. That's the popular angle here at Long Dong Silver. Let's roll that time lapse. All right, so I just took a close-up shot of what this thing looks like. I can show the image here, but it is smack dab, like right, right on those rocks. Um, I'm probably going to make one pass because I, first of all, I don't really know how much weight this little five inch quad can handle. It's also not a supercharged battery. It's only 1550. Um, which is a, like a, a megawatt amperage. I don't know, so it's like a medium amperage, not like a, a, a super like boosted amperage. That would mean that if it was like a 1650 or, or higher, I'd get a lot more throttle, more power, more electricity, more juice. But I have this, you probably can't see it here in my contrast, but like right here is my, my twined wire, my, uh, I guess, uh, industrial yarn 
and I, at the very end, I've zip tied and figure eight knotted it against a carabiner, which goes on my backpack. So at the very least, I'm not gonna lose the end of that string, but it's looking increasingly likely that as I send it up that giant cliff, that, that, that cord is pretty likely going to snag on one of those rocks on those edges and it might get tangled. It's really, it's not looking great. I'm gonna make one run, a dry test run, just to see if this drone can handle the weight of the string. It probably can, and I'm not gonna fly it in acro mode, I'm gonna fly it in horizon mode, which for those non-FPVers, horizon mode kind of emulates mode two with any DJI product. So it'll stay, it, it has the accelerometer baked into that chip, and it'll stay level. That way, if I need to, I can take the goggles off, take a look, uh, put the goggles back on. I have this little screen right there as well, which maybe I won't use the goggles. I'm gonna have to kind of feel it out, see how the reception looks. But yeah, using this camera, I'm also going to record just to see if I can, if I can see the string from the camera. I probably won't, it's such a small string, so. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm here, we're gonna try it. I'm probably not gonna make too many tries and the more, the more tries I make, the more risk there is in losing this FPV. Keeping in mind that I already, I already tried to get it by walking up that giant cliff over there and making it about 90% of the way up with a knife edge walk preventing that successful mission. This has been, pretty incredible road trip and I've probably recorded about one and a half terabytes of material so far. I'm, I'm on my way back to Los Angeles. If I could get this drone down, that's icing on the cake. If I lose this FPV in the process, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. Let's see how this FPV flies with this string. If the wind is too windy, if, if the string doesn't, doesn't unravel in the right ways, I may have to call it a lost cause, mostly based on this image that I zoomed in on, how the drone lodged on the side of the cliff really does not look, does not look great. That goes to show you that not everything maybe goes how you would want it to. As you can see, the cable that I had actually very meticulously wrapped. So I unraveled the entire spool, tied the two ends together, and then literally walked like to Long, to a Long Dong Silver over there and back, raveling it in a way that um, if you ever worked in like tech or theater production or anything like that, is how they wrap cables to ensure that they do not bunch up and uh, ravel in, in weird ways. But just just getting even 30 feet to 50 feet off the ground and having that wind push the drone around and push this cable around the, the wire, it actually tangled up more, like way more than I thought it would to an extent that would it would create like snags, snags in, in the rock formations up there with all those like little stone slabs jutting out. And at this stage, it is not really worth losing this FPV and that Mavic that's up there. Long Dong Silver, you stole my drone. Keeping in mind, I, I think it's very valuable to understand that I've been flying drones for a very long time. Um, professionally, commercially, for fun, you name it, for favors. <laughs> this is the first time that this has ever happened to me and while it doesn't feel good, I don't like walking away from a mission like this empty-handed. 
and god forbid something like that would happen on set that's why you get production insurance that's why you have a visual observer that's why you have hands on deck to assist the shoot god forbid that happens recreationally flying in legal zones but it's very likely you know come winter it's already like december but come winter uh like desert winter that fills up with snow in the spring it'll melt maybe it'll trickle it down it'll fall off the cliff maybe somebody will find it they'll see my name placard on it and give me a call because we all know where it is when you fly cameras through the through the sky there's always that chance there's always that likelihood that it's going to smack into something or delicately touch something and flip over and and sometimes it's on creative directors who are kind of pushing the limits of filmmaking a little bit closer than they should sometimes it's on the pilot for not understanding spatial awareness but sometimes it's both sometimes it's none sometimes it's just wind you know sometimes it's like a little if it's a light drizzle sometimes it's just like a little droplet hitting the motor and short circuiting it you know so there's always there's always an inherent risk with flying these things this is an incredible place and i'm very humbled and happy to be able to explore something like this because it's really very hard to reach this area not many people relatively you know more people go visit new york or miami or la but not many people really get to come here and especially for somebody that does landscape time lapse aerial fpv dji you know whatever your acronyms of choice are whatever your your methods and tools of choice hanksville utah is pretty incredible so i'm really happy to be here it's pretty nice and i've i've recorded a lot of material on this trip not just drone lots of time lapses as well so it's just it's just a casualty of war <sighs> happens.